Hey guys, welcome to the Silver Report Uncut. If you haven't already, come over and subscribe to our channel on Odyssey. It's an excellent platform. You get paid to interact on there. You can find all of our content we generally post here. Plus, you don't get removed because you can speak your mind. I'll leave a link in the description. Also, if you're on Telegram, another freedom platform, uh, you can follow our channel as t.me backslash Silver Report. So I wanted to go over what's going on with food prices. The other day we covered the warning that we could see food prices increase anywhere from 10 to 14 percent by October. This of course would be very significant. We haven't seen anything like this in quite some time. I wanted to touch on some of the warnings that are coming out from a restaurant manager in Manhattan. His name is John Stratus and he said that the rising cost and rising wages will mean that consumers will have to pay more for their meals. And in fact that New Yorkers could end up paying 40 to 50 dollars for a hamburger he said when the minimum wage goes up who do you think is going to pay for that the customer everything is going to go up just to be able to stay in business when we give more money the prices go up and when the prices go up who's going to pay for that they're going to be crying about it and saying it's too expensive that's inflation you're going to be walking in somewhere to eat something and paying 40 to 50 dollars just for a hamburger unquote now, obviously, we're not at that stage yet, but if we continue on this path, we will reach there sooner or later. I also wanted to touch on what's going on with home prices. Home prices have never really risen this fast, ever. And we see that home prices, they're 23% higher than they were the same time last year. The median price for an existing home in June, it reached an all-time high of $363,300. Again, that's 23% year over year. And it's 112 straight months of year-over-year -year gains, 23% in just one year. How many Americans out there do you think had their income increased by 23% over the past year? Now, along with the rapid increase in the price of homes, no doubt, the rental prices are also following suit. Rents have risen by more than 20% in major areas across the country. And the New York Times recently covered Caitlin Sindrich. She said that she was facing a $200 monthly increase in rent this August if she and her husband can renew their apartment lease in Provo, Utah. The 25% jump is not something she expected, and the 21-year-old said that she may have to skip doctor's appointments for her autoimmune disease to keep up with the payments. She acknowledges there isn't much of a choice but to pay more, saying, We are hoping to stay because everything is so expensive right now that I would be paying the same whether I'm here or somewhere else." Unquote. Now, data from Apartment List, it's a listing site, they said so far in 2021 that rental prices nationally have grown 9.2%. You compare that with 2-3% to that is typical from January to June. And according to the most recent data available, prices were higher than economists at Apartment List would have expected had this crisis never happened. While the people behind the curtain continue to tell us, and also the people in front of the curtain, the people they say are in charge, they keep saying how inflation is low. It doesn't mean everyone believes them. But according to a recent survey, we see over 70% of Americans are extremely or very concerned about inflation. So the people are upset about it. So it was an internal poll from the NRCC. It shows that growing concerns about rising inflation, 70% of respondents said that they were either extremely or very concerned about rising prices and the rising cost of living, no doubt. Now the polling memo, it was released on Thursday, and it showed that 60% said that they disapproved of the handling of the rising prices and the higher cost of living. Now, speaking of inflation, I also wanted to touch on what's going on with the weather in Brazil. Now, it's getting very serious. We do know just last week there was a frost that came through. It damaged a lot of the coffee trees. Along with that, the prices, they jumped. It's not over. Again, next week, they're predicting another cold snap is going to be coming in. And orange juice futures are now rising very rapidly. You see, Brazil is the world's leading orange juice producer. There's concerns that more widespread frost on Friday and Saturday in the southernmost regions could damage the citrus trees. Now, the president of World Weather Inc., he said that the frost later this week would damage some trees in the Minas Gerais state. The Friday forecast temperatures are hovering somewhere near freezing and widespread frost concerns could tighten supplies. And this is the reason why the orange juice futures are up more than 4.5%, hitting levels not seen since December 2018. But it's not just the orange juice. The coffee futures, they also surged more than 9% to $2.09 per pound. This is the highest since October 2014, and they're already predicting it could rise even further. 
Now, the forecast that came out and they called for more cold temperatures in Brazil. This is the world's top coffee producer. And the weather models, they show that this is imminent and will likely produce crop killing frosts across the southern region. And this, of course, happened just last week. It rallied 20%. Now coffee is up 10% more. The expected damage to trees in Brazil and more cold coming in. And it says, quote, it looks like we're set for another explosive week ahead with cold weather coming back into the coffee growing regions from midweek onward. That was Alex Bauten. He's a coffee trader. He wrote in a note to his clients. And therefore, we have seen just in one week, Arabica futures, they have been up 34%. Now, in the first round of the frost that began early last week, we see that the frost damaged more than 200,000 hectares or 495,000 acres of Arabica coffee fields, which is 11% of Brazil's total coffee area. Coffee trees are extremely sensitive to cold weather, and around 70% of their coffee is grown in this region. It accounts for approximately 40% of the global coffee trade. The prospect, therefore, of a decline in production for 2022 would suggest that coffee prices could go even higher. A coffee consultant, Judy Gaines, she said that prices could eventually reach $3 per pound, saying, quote, where is the coffee going to come from if the output from Brazil lapses? She noted again, Brazil accounts for 40% of world output. And besides the free cold snaps, the coffee trees in Brazil were already weakened by drought. Now, coffee happens to be one of America's favorite drinks, and at least 64% of American adults consume coffee every day. These weather conditions throughout South America will result in coffee inflation that coffee chains will need to either eat or pass on to consumers. Now, Starbucks uses 100% Arabica beans to make their coffee. Therefore, chains like this could see prices just go insane. Now, speaking of housing prices, I wanted to close out by touching on the latest data that came out from the Case Shiller Index. And it showed that U.S. home prices, they rose an astonishing 16.61% year on year in May. That's the latest data available. And this is the greatest year over year surge in prices in the 33 year history of the Case Schiller Index. In the largest 20 US cities, home prices, they rose at 16.99% year on year, far beyond expectations and just short of the record pace in July 2004 of 17.09%. So we were nearly there and it's likely we could reach it very, very soon. So Phoenix, San Diego, and Seattle had the highest year-over-year -year gains among the 20 cities that were surveyed. They said, quote, as was the case last month, five cities, Charlotte, Cleveland, Dallas, Denver, and Seattle joined the nation's composite in recording their all-time highest 12-month gains. Price gains in all 20 cities were in the, top, uh, in the top quartile of historic performance. In 17 cities, price gains were in the top decile. Now, while many Americans are sitting out there wondering how they're ever going to be able to afford a home, the question should be asked, why is the Federal Reserve still buying all of these mortgage-backed securities if it's having this impact on the housing market? I'm kind of starting to wonder what the housing market would look like if the Federal Reserve was not meddling in it. I thank you guys for stopping by and joining us. As always, stay free.